G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Uh, I know that I'm a little bit late to the party on this news, but I thought I'd make a video today discussing uh, the prospect of this new AFL side that we're gonna see in the league uh, in 2028. Hailing from Tasmania, finally, it has been a uh, long journey towards getting um, 19 teams in the competition, but also Tasmania specifically. Uh, I was interested to learn that the push for Tasmania to join the league has actually come as early as 1992 in terms of a formalized bid. So ever since the VFL pretty much became the AFL, or shortly after, um, you know, not long after the Brisbane Bears, the West Coast Eagles, then the Adelaide Crows in 1990, shortly after that, Tasmania um, started making a claim to join the AFL, and it's finally happened in 2023, some 31 years later, which is a fantastic result. A lot of football purists like to see a Tasmania team represented because they're historically a football state, and then, of course, lots of Tasmanians as well uh, will feel passionate about this, I'm sure, when you contrast it as well to the expansion sides. GWS and Gold Coast some 12 years ago when they joined the league, that was very much a, a business-oriented move to try and grow the game in non-footballing states. By contrast, Tasmania now, who is a legitimate football state, has their has that legitimacy enhanced, I guess, with an actual AFL team uh, who's gonna join us in five years time. So we sort of knew this was coming. Uh, there's a little bit been bubbling away under the surface for a number of years now. We weren't sure when, but the timeline has been officially given to us as 2028. And with that um, comes the understanding that a 23,000 seat stadium will be built on Hobart's waterfront there, um, which will have a retractable roof as well, uh, much like Marvel Stadium, which will be interesting. As I said, it's kind of been a uh, long winding journey to get here to the AFL for Tasmania. Um, back in 2014, I think they were given loose guidelines about the expectations of a Tasmania team and it was sort of outlined that they'd want to be looking at 50,000 members and looking back on the data here it says that in 2018 uh, there were 90,000 members from Tasmania across all of the 18 existing clubs so 90,000 potential members were sitting there in Tasmania as members of existing clubs already so converting that to 50,000 members of a new Tasmanian franchise seems pretty doable yes it will be hard potentially to convert some existing AFL fans to support a Tasmanian team but when you factor in the identity of a Tasmanian football club I think it'll appeal to a lot of existing AFL fans in Tasmania I remember doing a video on Tasmania's bid I think in late 2021 and we we're talking about how earlier that year the Tasmanian government had given somewhat of an ultimatum to the AFL saying that if they didn't get an answer on a potential AFL side in the coming years they would terminate their existing contract with them which allowed clubs like Hawthorne and North Melbourne to play several games there a year that contract was actually going to expire in 2022 and Tasmania threatened not to extend it rather than terminate it what the government wanted was a concrete timeline as to when the AFL planned to get the Tasmanian team into motion and the AFL didn't reply with a concrete timeline but instead they conducted an independent review as to the merits on the financial viability, I guess, of a Tasmanian team in the AFL. From memory, the results of that independent review weren't warmly received by the Tasmanian government. I believe it suggested that the most viable option for a Tassie team was to be a joint venture between an existing AFL club, say a North Melbourne in particular. But Tasmanians want their own team. They don't want to uh, merge or even relocate an existing football club, even if that was technically more financially viable. And the independent review did sort of hedge its bets a little bit on this issue and said that potentially with the right government funding a standalone team in Tasmania was potentially financially viable. And here we are today, that's exactly what's going ahead. So we know that the league will expand to 19 teams in 2028, which gives us plenty of time to prepare. We're also gonna see that Tassie team most likely in the VFL by 2025. So season after next. What will be interesting to contemplate uh, when the league hits 19 teams is the impact it will have on the rest of the league. So most notably, first of all, 19 teams is a little bit awkward. So we're gonna see buyers come back. Does that sort of invite the prospect of a 20th team in the league? Locations such as Perth most recently have been suggested as having uh, the potential to have a third team in there. Northern Territory's always talked about a little bit, but I believe the social issues going on over there make it a little bit difficult. I don't really have any insight to that. But perhaps just as significantly in terms of impact into the league as it stands and the, the teams that we all go for is naturally the, the impact it's gonna have on you know the draft and stuff like that. And I've been, I made a video recently talking about Richmond and how I think they're headed for some a difficult period in terms of their list transition with the prospect of a new club coming in and completely 
compromising the talent pool, I guess. But interestingly, McLaughlin made some comments on this issue and sort of suggested that the AFL's learned a lot from how GWS and Gold Coast entered the competition and two expansion sides there, to different extents, haven't seen a lot of success um, and you have to take the learnings from that in the way that they built is that it was probably too patient an approach, too much young talent injected to that list and not enough focus on being competitive in the short term. And we saw two different sort of pathways for Gold Coast and GWS here. With the Gold Coast Suns, a lot of the talent that they recruited just didn't come good and uh, they had some issues with the facilities and stuff like that, couldn't retain players. GWS, by contrast, probably had much better luck developing the players that they did get. A lot of players certainly got close to their potential, but what happened was a lot of them got good at the same time and it made it hard for GWS to retain those players. They were willingly selling off players for future picks to the extent that it just became normal for uh, players from Victoria to sort of do their apprenticeship at GWS and then when they hit their prime they would just all shoot off in different directions to different clubs. So the takeaway from that is what I think the AFL is going to do is avoid a really long-term build for a Tasmanian club and then financially as well it's going to make sense. You don't want it to leave it too far in the future for a team to come good because financially that's going to have its own impact. I'm sure even the most diehard Tassie fans don't want to spend five years watching their team get belted every week. So what's the workaround on that? Well I think we're going to see some concerns to this new Tasmania team where they have a lot more access to established players. So on the plus side, rebuilding might not be as difficult for some of those clubs like I mentioned like Richmond or even my club like West Coast over those years. The draft may not be as compromised, but we may see Tasmania have access to a lot more established players from our clubs. McLaughlin's quoted as saying, I think there's an acknowledgement that patience is less in our competition and the team will have to compete more aggressively on a week to week basis from U1. So maybe I had previously had the, the idea that um, if you're rebuilding during the 2026 to 27 drafts, those drafts would likely be heavily compromised. I'm sure they will still be compromised uh, to a certain extent, but maybe not as much as we'd thought. But the prospect of us all losing established players to this new club is likely to happen. It's unrealistic to expect that a new team comes into the competition and uh, there isn't a ripple effect through all of the other 18 teams. So if we see that this Tasmania team does have access to free agents and uh, they're able to more or less pillage other clubs for their established talent, I'm sure there'll be caps to ensure that one club doesn't get annihilated more than others. This will still have its own impact on the draft that year. If you think about it, if 18 clubs lose one player each and each player that they lose is worth a compensation pick that that club receives instead, then in theory, we could have, you know, 15 to 18 compensation picks suddenly injected into the draft, which means the entire draft gets pushed back an extra round. So either way, the draft's gonna be compromised and regardless of all that, I think it's still gonna be a bad time to be rebuilding around that 26 to 27 period. And I highlighted Richmond as an example of that where they haven't got strong draft picks next year, which means that they've gotta hit the draft hard in 24 and 25, assuming that a premiership for them in the next couple of years is out the window. For the other bottom clubs right now, it's hard to foresee who is going to be likely affected. To be honest, I think all of North Melbourne, West Coast and Hawthorne will have recruited enough heavily from the upcoming drafts in that period to potentially be okay by 26 and 27. So we're a little bit far out to uh, foresee a team struggling around that period. But I highlighted Richmond. We could see a Brisbane perhaps who have a bit of an aging list. But again, we see teams like Geelong and Sydney prop themselves up for so long um, that it's hard to ignore which teams are going to be impacted more than others. Because it's so far in the future as well, five years down the track, it's also hard to foresee which players are likely to be picked up by Tasmania. Um, a lot of the players who are free agents now are obviously going to be close to retirement in five years' time. And some of the names that have been thrown around uh, who are pretty much gun players right now would be likely around the 2018 to 2019 draft. So Caleb Sarong, Hayden Young, Trent Rivers, Cozzy Pickett, yes, he's just signed a four-year deal, so technically, but I can't see him relocating to Tasmania. Will Day's another one from the 2019 draft. These guys will be hitting that 26-year-old age. I don't know if the free agency rules will apply to Tasmania where they have to have done eight years at their club. Maybe they'll relax the rules around that period. As far as the Tasmanian team's prospects in this league, it's a little bit hard to forecast as well. To be honest with you, looking at the GWS and Gold Coast models, I'd probably had a little bit of concern that Tasmania would be able to retain players in the same way that Gold Coast and GWS do. Uh, it's not a lifestyle thing or the fact that Hobart's or Tasmania generally is not a great place to live. I don't think it's that, but the idea that you know these top five to top 10 Victorian draft pick talents 
um, will be likely to stay in Tasmania. It seems unlikely to me, and we've seen that not just with Gold Coast and GWS, but I think that's a realistic thing to consider for most of the interstate clubs at the moment. Classic example is West Coast had picked two last year, and Harry Sheasel was right there for the taking, but they did their due diligence, and they thought, this guy's not likely to come to Perth, or he's likely to come to Perth, but leave after two years. That's another concern for me if Tasmania's initial list is built too heavily on young Vic Metro talent, which is likely to populate the early part of the draft. It usually does. That being said, for a 26 plus year old player to move to Tasmania won't be a lot more tempting if a player has a young family. Tasmania would be a great place to live. Do I think an 18 year old Harley Reid is likely to want to stay there potentially? I don't really. The other impact that we have to consider is as well, um, drafting Tasmania talent. And this is probably a good time for this point to be made because in this year's upcoming draft, there's a kid called Colby McKercher, McCarcher, McKercher. He's projected to be a top 10 talent potentially. Um, so does a club now second guess drafting a McKercher in the first round because they're worried about the retention issue in four years time? That might seem silly, but the prospect for a young 18 year old Tasmanian who will be 22 or 23 by the time this team rolls around to play for the first ever Tasmanian team, that's a chance to be part of history. Suddenly I think you'd be second guessing some of these Tasmanian talents. There's a few other young quality Tasmanian players around the league. Lockie Cowans at Carlton, uh, Chase Jones at Adelaide, uh, Sam Banks at Richmond hasn't played a game yet, but he was drafted, I think, in the second round. Uh, and then who knows where Taron Thomas will be. But again, another highly rated Tasmanian talent. It was interesting, just in this research for this video, I learned that uh, Richmond have five Tasmanian players. That's crazy. Anyway, that's for me just kind of uh, rambling, getting the thoughts of Tasmania joining the league uh, off my chest. I think it's a great thing. Uh, I would like to see 20 teams in the league. I don't really want to see buys. I'd like to see an even 20-team league and then perhaps some teams relocated in the in the future to, uh, to accommodate any other parts of Australia that are not represented currently. But it'll be interesting to learn over the coming years and months what the, the team name is going to be. We assume it's going to be Tasmanian Devils. I heard that there's a little bit of a trademark issue with the Tasmanian Devil with Warner Brothers, the actual cartoon character. Uh, but I believe that through leasing and such, uh, that name is still potentially on the table. So you'd imagine it would be the Tasmanian Devils. You'd imagine some sort of green and gold jumper as well. But anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you think about the prospect of this new Tasmanian team. Anything you think I might have missed in this, uh, this rambling about them. As always, I appreciate your input on the channel. Hope you're all enjoying the content and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.